So, recessive genes and dominant genes. What actually is the difference? Well, most genes in humans are actually paired. That is, you receive one gene from your father and one gene from your mother. Sometimes these genes are identical and sometimes they're different. And when they're different, the body needs to know which one of the blueprints to actually follow. In this case, they follow the dominant gene. This doesn't mean that a particular gene that you follow is any better than a recessive gene. It's just the one the body follows. It's going to be clearly seen in the following examples. Dwarfism is dominant over normal height. Six fingers are dominant over five. Web fingers are dominant over standard ones. If not, they're any better. It's just the one the body follows. Now, the mathematics of this process were understood actually before the mechanisms were, mainly due to the work of Gregor Mendel and his experiments with pea plants. Mass is actually based upon quarters rather than halves, as you might expect. This is because each of your parents has two of the respective genes, but will only contribute one gene to a particular child. It's can be most easily seen when both parents have one recessive gene, one dominant gene, a particular trait or allele. You know, sometimes known as actually being a carrier for that gene. Chances of both parents each contributing a dominant gene is one in four. Chances of both parents contributing a recessive gene is again one in four. And the chances of getting one recessive and one dominant gene from the parents is one in two. The question then comes up why are some detrimental recessive genes around in large proportions of the population? Part of this has to do with the fact that a particular gene may actually affect several different processes, and even several genes may combine their effects on a single trait. This can be clearly seen in the recessive gene for sickle cell anemia, which is a blood disorder which affects millions of people. Now, the people who carry the recessive gene, that is, those who have one normal gene and one gene for sickle cell don't suffer the ill effect of the gene as far as their blood goes, but they do have an increased resistance to malaria, as do those people who have both genes for sickle cell. So in areas of the world where malaria is common, it's actually advantageous to have the gene for sickle cell, as sickle cell actually causes fewer deaths than malaria does. This can be seen in human populations for Africa and India, where malaria is common, generally in lowland and marshy areas, the gene for sickle cell is also common. Where malaria is rarer in the drier mountainous areas, sickle cell is rarer. So that's an introduction to recessive and dominant genes. Hope it's helpful.